guys. Uh, just got some new filament. Picked up some of this from Fellow Schroeder. Very cheap. And then, uh, according to Elmerate over there, um, it's a copolyester, which is like tea glaze and um, PETG ish stuff like that. But this is hotter. This is, um, uh, this, I'm at 245 degrees. I print PTG or PTT tea glaze at 235 is the ideal temperature for that. Uh, but this is supposed to be like Color Fab XT, and the price wasn't too bad, so I figured I'd pick up a little. Um, it's on sale right now, it's $10 a pound, because all the Tallman's, um, all the Tallman stuff is sold by the pound. So, it works out, you know, 20, eh, around $20, $22, $23 a kilo. Um, but I just uh, put it in here, this is the first print with it. And I was going to go over real quick on what I do to tune in filament. So I just picked something. This is just a cool spiral base. And uh, I set it for print. I went online. I found the recommended settings, which are completely weird. Uh, people are saying, oh, yeah, you know, two, uh, 240 degrees is the max, according to Tallman. But people are saying they're getting great prints with it at 260. So what I did was is I just... Um, I brought, I picked up this file and uh, I went with 0.2 layers and I started printing it and as I was printing the bottom layer I started playing with the with the temperature a little bit and I found 240 was pretty good um, so I bumped it up to 250 and watched it as it was heating up it seemed to do pretty well around 245, but when I hit 250, it looked like it started stringing a little bit. So I just backed it back to 245. Um, I don't know, not very scientific, but hey, you know, I teach their own. You want to sit around and play one, one degree at a time, you know, that's cool. That's a great way to tune in your filament. Frankly, I'm not too picky when it comes to that. Uh, so then... Uh, the next thing I did was, is it was, it was on the second, actually I did it on the third layer, I started playing with the extrusion multiplier a little bit. And I just bumped it up 5% and I didn't notice any difference. So that's telling me that it's not going to be too fussy, but the bottom layer is not the best point, best uh, place to try to bring out those effects. In a little thin wall like this, this is where I want to see um, how well it's filling in the gap and how clear it's going to come out. So, I got to check the file here. This one is, bring it up, uh, 30 mil, no, no, 78 millimeters high. So, what I'll probably do is I'm going to probably print it 20 millimeters and then I'm going to bump it up to, uh, I'll go to 110% and do another 20 millimeters. And then I'm going to drop it down back to 100 and see what it looks like. I mean, right now it's actually, you know, it's still very early to tell. But from this, I mean, that's actually looking pretty good. So I'm not sure if I want to mess with this more or not. Um, but we're going to find out. So, yeah, this will be a sacrificial one. I might play around with the temperatures a little bit. I don't know. I'll do some weird stuff, but the biggest thing is, is start writing this stuff down. Um, now, with the Duet Wi-Fi, I have uh, the machine status gives me its current location in millimeters. I'm 3.73 millimeters high right now. So what I can do is I just take a little scrap piece of paper, write down 10 millimeters, and write down what I changed. So that afterwards, I mean, you don't really need a, a um, you know, a measuring device to see where you made the changes because if you can't find it visibly, then it obviously wasn't an important change. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to play with the settings a little bit and uh, see what we can come up with. And then we will go to time lapse.
All right, turn start. All I'm going to do is, well, this is so hot. Just wipe off the nozzle. Ah, good enough. Pry it off the front bed, and I will see you in super extreme close-up mode. All right, here we are in super extreme close-up mode, and not much different. Not really all that different if you look across this thing. I see something right there though. I see that pretty clearly. You see that line right there. And this is what happened is this was at 260 degrees Celsius. And I dropped it down to 240 right there. So for optical clarity definitely looks like cooler is a little better uh, I now I thought it'd be hotter would be better to melt these layers together and everything which this is probably going to be stronger over here than over here you know layer adhesion and stuff but for optical clarity yeah you can really see it right there a big band um, optical clarity 240 is better up here I dropped it to 235 and I really can't see the seam for it so it would be somewhere in about here but I don't really notice too much of a difference between here and here the light is absolutely ridiculous because it's so shiny um, so yeah I'm gonna say that cooler is better for clarity uh, strength I mean they feel the same right here but and it's not really breaking anywhere it's very very squishy actually um, for strength I, I'm gonna say that this is probably gonna be stronger down to 260 I can't can't confirm that but that's what we're looking at very forgiving in temperature 245, 250, 255, 260, back to 240, down to 235, and a little chewiness up there. So 235 does seem like it's a little too cool. All right, thanks for watching. Oh, wait, hold on. You guys see this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can see right through that. Yeah definitely clear on the bottom i'm out <laughs> money shot